you know, I I relive it every time I walk in somebody's house and see a microphone in their bedroom. Every time I walk in somebody's house and they got a microphone in their bedroom, I'm like, and they look at me and say, man, that's all I got. And I'm like, that's all I had, you know what I mean? Like, we didn't have a booth. Like, Fonte would, I would be sitting in the chair and Fonte would be standing right here recording. That's how we recorded the listening. And, and we just had the little egg crates up in the corner, you know what I mean? But, you know, I, that moment in time, we decided to say, well, you know what, man, like, we all hungry and broke, but why not? Like, this is, let's just see if we can make a great project. Not can we get a deal, not can we get on, can we make something we can listen to ourselves? We all love music and we know what good music sounds like to us. And we look at music from an objective standpoint, let's see if we can do that and kind of sit back and say, yeah, this is kind of dope. So that's what I reminisce, just the simplicity of the time. Like it's a very simple time. It was just us and that compact presario and that microphone. That's all we had, <laughs> you know what I mean? And the rest is history, man. The Yo-Yo was one of those, the songs that people really don't pay attention to. That was kind of the precursor to what Kanye West end up being, if I'm making sense. Kanye was a, let me say, first person with a band's in a backpack, right? Well, Fonte at the time was trying to dispel the myth of what, what underground rap really was. That's why he said, I'm about to kick some trick daddy next poetry night to let you know that just because we listen to a certain thing don't mean we don't like this and we don't like that and blah, blah, blah. That Fonte verse, which ended up being a hip hop quotable in the source, um, really was like, and to be honest, Slum Village did it before that. Like Slum Village talked about menage a and all this stuff in, on Fantastic Volume 2. But it's kind of funny when you hear underground hip hop fans saying, I don't like to hear about sex and money and drugs and all this. And I'm like, well, Slum talked about sex a lot and talked about smoking dope and you know what I mean? And Fonte kind of carried that on to kind of dispel this myth of what underground hip hop is. And so that's what's special about the yo-yo is that. That song was, that's trying to dispel that myth. We never really felt what major is supposed to feel like because we never moved away from North Carolina. If we'd have moved to New York City and been there all the time and got into the culture and just been around it all the time, was all the time coming, then maybe we would have felt it, but it's just like, it didn't still didn't feel like being major, you know what I mean? Because we still do, did the music we wanted to do. We still turned in the album in full. It wasn't like we turned the album and they were like, okay, we have sis, we can't have this song, we can't have that song, we can't have this song. No, no. We turned the album in in full. We turned our artwork in in full. We turned everything in in full. Like, this is the album. You're going to take it and you're going to pick some singles and you're going to run with it. That's what's going to happen. So it still felt like we was doing things on our own, so to speak. Um, but it did shock us that Lior. We were outside of the venue, and we signed autographs, whatever, whatever. And Leo walks up. He was like, guys, he was like, hey, man, what are you doing here? We all was looking at him, what you doing here, man? He's like, man, he said, man, y'all, my guys, I come to see the show, you know what I mean? And so, you know, they all sat over in the corner. It was Leo, it was Julie, it was Craig Coleman, T.I. had a table. It was nuts, like it was nuts, but, you know, it just felt like, our music was not far removed from what we did already. So we just felt like we was doing a show. It was just packed. They knew what they were getting, man. Like, we sat in, you sat in that, that, that room. You're dealing with, and I'm not saying this affects you in any way, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. You're dealing with three black kids from the South who don't drink, smoke, who have a clear frame of mind, who are known for going against the grain and coming in with the attitude of, I don't care what y'all say, bro. We ain't gonna do it. We ain't gonna do it. And, if, and, and you know we're not gonna do it. You know we'll take our album and go back to the street. We don't, we don't care, you know what I mean? At that time, I had already, Fonte and I had, had foreign exchange success. I had already had three Destiny Child records and a Jay-Z record already. So they're looking at us like, you know, we they just we just don't know what to do with y'all. We just like y'all ain't gonna do nothing we say. And so 
especially when we named our album The Minstrel Show. And when we said, we was like, okay, we got time for our album. And Craig called and looked at us and said, what is it? We were like, The Minstrel Show. And they were like, what you mean, Minstrel Show? It was like, M-I-N-S-T-R-E-L. The Minstrel Show. Like minstrelsy, blackface. They were like, oh, um, you just saw the whole table. I said, oh my God. Right. They just didn't know what to do with it. Like, and we explained why. And I think Craig had wanted to pick Say It Again as a single. We was like, nah, loving it. We was like, but say it again. Nah. We just wasn't having it. Like, we just went, you know, I think Fonte came, matter of fact, he did. Fonte came to like, he came to like Atlantic dressed as Prairie Some Miracles one time and walked around Atlantic and met everybody. He had on a wig, he had on a glasses. I never forget it, man. You know, on tour, you know, we on tour when I went on the road or whatever. Fonte and I were roommates majority of the time. And the day he we in the room, he said, Look, man, when I go in this bathroom and I come out, I need for you to talk to me like I'm Percy Miracles. If you say Tay, it's not gonna work. If you say Percy, it's, that's what I need to get going. I said, all right. So you went to the bathroom and he came out. I said, Percy, what's up? Hey man, what's up, baby? And it was crazy. It was just me and him in the room. I'm like, it's crazy. So we leave and he said, man, he said, nah, man, I don't wanna take no cab. I wanna walk up the street. So we're walking up the street to Atlantic because we stayed right around the corner of the hotel. And he's dressed as Person Miracles in this light blue, Carolina blue suit with the ruffles right here and the big bow tie and the white shoes and the wig and the, and the shades. I'm like, this is amazing. And he goes up in Atlantic. And he went in Julie's office and, hey, Julie, baby, what's up, baby? And we, he stayed like that for like, like six, seven hours. Yeah, like, I think that was the point where they knew like, yo, we can't do nothing with these dudes, bro. Like, we really can't do anything. But it wasn't like outlandish. It wasn't, you know, we're being disrespectful. We were just, we like, look, we're coming in representing the sound. We got certain fans we don't want to lose. We're coming in representing the art form. We're coming in, our name is Little Brother, so our big brothers, De La Tribe, The Roots, all of them are looking at us to be them dudes. We're not changing for none of y'all. I don't care what y'all say. And that's, that's what it was, Atlantic, man. We just weren't gonna change. It was supposed to be, the listening was the radio show, the minstrel show was the TV show, and the next album was supposed to be the movie. That's how it was supposed to be, set up that way. The radio show, WJLR, the TV show, you are watching UBN, you Black Niggas Network, and the movie was supposed to be next. And the next Little Brother album was supposed to be a black exploitation film called Can't Win For Losing. Yep. If it were, all of us stay together as three, it was supposed to be the black exploitation movie. And the cover was supposed to look like a black exploitation film with the cartoons and all of that. And, and it was gonna be called Fonte and Big Pool Night Wonder Little Brother Can't Win For Losing. Cause we already thought that the Mr. Show didn't do what we wanted it to do and we're trying to do the best music game we can and we still getting the short end of the stick because we don't decide to do this we don't decide to do that so we're gonna name the next album can't win for losing yep yeah. <laughs> uh-uh we had we had a song that's we, had, we was gonna have a song called we can't win for losing and the hook was gonna go like a nigga can't win for losing like straight up i i cannot make this up and they and, they, and that album may never come out <laughs> <laughs> but at the time, you know, before things, you know, went awry or whatever, that's that's what it was supposed to be. Can't win for losing. BT, you know, at the time, and the thing about, you know, and I say this with all confidence, you know, Stephen Hill was a Little Brother fan. He said, I played Little Brother in my car. You know, a lot of people play music in that car. Corporate people play music in that car that they don't feel that'll work in mainstream. It happens. So the whole intelli too intelligent for BT's market, you know, we were talking about things that yeah, it was not gonna fit. We're talking about 2005 BT, right? 
no, you getting us up on BT to rap about what we were rapping about? Nah, it's just it's not gonna work. And and that was that's what came to us. It was like a list of artists. These are the list of artists that you don't play on BT. Like, and it was like like Daylight was on that list. It was a bunch of people. Well, we're not playing these artists because they don't fit in what I scheme. You know what I mean? And so yeah, that was, that was straight up. It was surprising. I, you know, at first I was like, man. I think the biggest thing for me was that that was my probably my first instance in realizing like something ain't right with this game, man. Like there's something going on up top that I need to start paying attention to. And something's not right, you know. Something's not right of how we were are seen in the media. Something's not right of how we're seen in you know how hip hop is seen in the media, how black men are seen. I got to really start paying attention to that. You know what I mean? Some people never get that epiphany. Some people never get that light bulb. That was my light bulb moment to say, okay, we're too intelligent. Who says that? Like, you know what I mean? For the BT. So what are you saying about the audience, so to speak? And and that was, that's just what it was. Then we started thinking, well, man, who on TV is intelligent? Like, you know, we started thinking that. And then we started thinking, well, Maybe they don't want to tell us stuff on TV. So once you start thinking on that line, it just turns into something else. And so that's 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 our mind. That was our mind frame when we when we heard that.